Live from the Panera Studios, it's the Reading with Robin show, brought to you each week by my friends at Panera Bread, where it's food as it should be. 100% of their food is 100% clean. I like to start the day at Panera with a steaming mug of coffee. There's nothing like that first cup. I see all the regulars. Your neighborhood Panera, it's just like Cheers. Panera is the perfect place for a business meeting, book club, or to meet up with friends over a delicious lunch. Try one of their sandwiches, soups, or salads, or you pick two. There's something for everyone at Panera. And now, enjoy the show. Yoga Bodies, real people, real stories, and the power of transformation. My guest on Reading with Robin is Lauren Lipton. We have not spoken, well, we just spoke, but we have not spoken <laughs> in a really long time. Lauren is a journalist who covers style, trends, and travel her work has appeared in the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, Allure, Town & Country, Condé Nast Traveler, and numerous other publications. We have known each other for a long time. She's always been very special to me. So when Yoga Bodies, when the book came out and, and you sent me information, I was like, yes, we must talk about this gorgeous new book of yours. And I want to welcome you back to Reading with Robin. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. It's. Re- I, it has been. When was the last time we had a radio interview? Well, my to- last book was 2009, which kind of blows me away. So that's right? kind of you know. So right, like what yes. seven years? That's just. It just makes me. I can't even <laughs> believe it's been that long. So I think that's how long it's been. The years. So I'm, I'm just glad. Just glad to talk to you again. <laughs> I'm thrilled to talk to you. I know the years do kind of blend after a while, and that was when right? I was on. HJJ, but it's still yeah. reading with Robin, and you can visit Lauren at laurenlipton.com. And where else can people find you? Are you on Instagram? I uh, actually, Yoga Bodies is. It's um, yoga underscore bodies, that's plural. And then um, there's a Yoga Bodies website that is yogabodiesbook.com. Okay, so they can, and people can go to laurenlipton.com to find those, but it's yogabodiesbook.com. Exactly. And also on Instagram, and I mean, because those those things are really important. People like to check that out, see what's going on. But I remember when this book arrived, thinking, "Wow!" I mean, there's yoga is everywhere. People are fascinated. There's so much to discuss on so many different levels. And the, these photographs, I was telling you, I have little papers stuck in all of my favorite stories, but really they're all favorites. They did an amazing job with the various people you wanted to show, bodies, reasons that people wanted to participate. How did you go about collecting all of these participants? Well, um, so the book is for, I guess I should probably say that the book is a, it's a book of photography and interviews. So there's portraits of about 80 different people doing a yoga pose they like. And then next to each, each portrait, there's a little, uh, we call an as told to interview that just talks about them in their own words and about their yoga practice. And so I did, you know, when I was, when I was planning it, I, I did want to show sort of a typical cross section of people that you might, who you might see in a big city yoga class, because if you're on Instagram, all you see are like, you know, one kind of person. And it's usually like a beautiful, blonde, skinny, 20 something girl in a bikini, you know, <laughs> doing an, something that you could never do, right? Of those. Yes. Correct. And I'm all about, like, I love that. There's nothing wrong with that, you know? Um, right. But of course that what that does is it makes it seem that you, you know, that you have to look like that or be able to do those advanced poses in order to get the benefits of yoga. Right. So I wanted to, I had this weird idea that I wanted to solve the world's problems by having everybody, it was just a small goal, by having everybody do yoga. Because I do feel like if we all were more calm and more grounded, that we would all be nicer to each other. And yeah. I mean, it's, it, it sounds dumb and lame, but I actually believe that it would work. And so, so I, I don't think to it's past to this. Go ahead. The, no, I don't think it's dumb or labor at all. And I think that sometimes these very big ideas are the way to go. And then they sort of, filter down and, and work in a, in a way that could be less than that, you know, solving the world's problems, but yet solving a lot of them and making a huge, you know, huge difference in a very small way. That's a, thank you. And yeah, I mean, I feel like 
let, I, I don't really think I'm going to bring about world peace with my book. Although if I do, that would be great. <laughs> you know, but <laughs> do I think that maybe one or two people look, will look at it and try yoga and like it? Yeah, for sure. And that makes me feel good. You know, yeah. and I think in looking at this book, you'll, you might go through it and think, Oh, that person looks like me and they can mm-hmm. do yoga, you know, yeah. that, and, or that person thinks like me and, and they can do yoga. So why can't I? That was my That's, point, I guess. Right, and there's somebody to, there's somebody here for everybody to connect with. And so how did yes. you, I mean, to wind up with such an amazing cross-section of people, um, and you practice, so are these some of the people that you know? So I looked at it as a casting process, and um, I did a lot. So, so of the 80 people, it's like 80-something people. Um, some of them are teachers of mine. So, so some are professional yogis who, you know, that I've taken classes from. Mm-hmm. Um, some are people that, who I know who take yoga, you know, practice yoga. Some are fellow students at my yoga studio in New York and, and in Connecticut, um, where I, I practice in both places. Mm-hmm. And then the rest of, then there's some like, I actually call them unicorns. There's some really <laughs> special yogis who I, I really needed to do. I, I wanted to find someone, for example, I wanted to find an amputee. Um, who practice yoga. Mm-hmm. And I, I did sort of a reporting job, you know, tracking down this woman named Marsha Danzig, who has been doing, she was, she has one leg. She um, had bone cancer in her lower leg when she was a little girl, wow. but she is a, a spectacular yogi. She has beautiful balance. She can do, you know, amazing work. Um, and she's a teacher. So I, anyway, I, I just, I just tracked her down online and wrote her this impassioned, <laughs> this impassioned email asking if she'd be in the book. And I actually wow. flew her, I flew her in from Dayton, Ohio to be in my book. So it was a combination of knowing people and then just cold calling people, you know, the, whatever the current version of cold calling is. Stalking. I love yeah, this pretty one. much. <laughs> Marsha in uh, the tree pose, and and again the photography, and working with a photographer on such an intimate book, really, and getting what you're trying to extract from the photograph and the essence of it, you know, so that it goes along with the story, and that this book is just. Um, this is, and again, I should tell everybody, this is a book to put on your list. What a gorgeous gift to give to anybody really would who would connect with this book whether your friends or your family are practicing yoga or might be interested in it or um it's just a beautiful book it's called yoga bodies real people real stories and the power of transformation and lauren lipton and then the photography is by jamie is it baird i don't know how baird yes baird. Jamie baird um so yeah what was that like working together because i see some of these are they're in different places but it looks like some of them or are they all in the same studio? No, they're in about, we did 15 different shoots over the course okay. of about six months. So we, Jamie and I worked very closely together. And we did do, some of them are in the same studio. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're probably about eight different locations. Some in I Los Angeles. Me. Thank you. Um, and so Jamie and I, Jamie's a fitness photographer. Um, and I had stumbled across her work when I was, um, you know, right after this book was sold. And I thought she's the perfect person. She does amazing things with light. She's just a really, um, she shoots in natural light, which presented a challenge if you're shooting in New York in January on a day that does not have natural light. <laughs> which, um, but she, but when, when all goes well, I mean, she did it anyway. She made it work. And then on there, you know, when all goes well and the light hits a person a certain way, it's, just, it's sort of magical to me. Um, well, that's the light comes shining through, I mean, in so many ways, certainly in the form of yoga and all that that encompasses, but some of these sort of like warehouse shots with the big windows and the bar, they, it's really dazzling. And the, the light actually really struck me on many of these yoga bodies, com, And you can check some of these out, but they really are. The light is, is one of the unifying themes, which again, just connects it all in such a really meaningful way. Winter, January, New York, how did you bring the light in for that situation? How did you get We that just willed it. <laughs> like we, we, sometimes, I mean, sometimes there are a few photos where I feel like I can't, I mean, in some cases, I'll tell you that we, we photographed each person, you know, there's probably a thousand pictures, a thousand frames of each of those yogis doing their wow. thing in, in, you know, different, not always the same pose. And 
in a couple of cases, there was one shot and that was it. And, it, you know, it wasn't because of the yogi. It was because we had to get everything right. You know, the, wow. they have to, the pose needs to be reasonably accurate, though we didn't, we weren't so worried about perfection. Um, but, you know, the light has to be good and their face has to be relaxed and, you know, the logo on their pants needs to be covered. It was a lot of stuff that I learned. Oh, right. You don't, you don't want to be doing that. I read that no in your logo. introduction. No logo. Yeah. And I, I read that in the introduction you talk about uh, about not going for the perfection or that mm-hmm. was how the pose was at that time. And I'm speaking with Lauren Lipton, her book, Yoga Bodies, Real People, Real Stories, and the Power of Transformation is out. It's gorgeous. And if ever there were a book to get for yourself and or those you love who also love yoga. And it seems we were talking off air that there are so many yoga studios and so many people practicing. Is that my imagination or is this just what's going on? I don't know. I mean, there there do seem to be, according to statistics, significant more people practicing yoga now than even five years ago. I think it's something like 30 million Americans now, which is, if you think about it, kind of astonishing. And, and yoga is something that, I mean, for those who don't practice or don't know that much about it, one thing I should say is that there's some style of yoga that suits everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there aren't 30 million Americans who can do, like Victor, we were just talking about, he's doing a headstand just on his head. He's not uh, even, his hands are not on the ground. So uh, I think not a lot, 30 million Americans cannot do that. But, um, but if you cannot do that, there is a style of gentler yoga or beginning yoga, or there's yoga that you can just drape yourself over pillows and not do anything, but just lie there. That's a great kind of yoga. I, I was telling um, you, that's one of my, I like that one. <laughs> there's, yeah, it's, it's like, it's called restorative yoga. And you, mm-hmm. you basically build these pillow forts and just drape yourself over them and someone massages oil into your shoulders. I mean, it's, it's really like the best thing ever. And um, so there's that kind of yoga and, the point of this long-winded aside is that um, there are a lot of studios. Each one is different. If you're interested in trying yoga and you go to a studio and it's just not your thing for whatever reason, go to another one. Try that yoga. See if that one works for you. And, and is it ever too late? I mean, you have different ages in this book and people who have started at all different points. And what would you say to somebody about taking up yoga at any point or – is it something where, okay, you know, you pass the point. You, <laughs> like you you're past the tipping point. No yoga you missed, for you. You missed it. You missed it. <laughs> no, you know, I will say that the, that's interesting. The reason I got the idea for the book, the, the seed of this idea came to me about five years ago when my then 90-year-old mother-in-law was visiting us um, in our Connecticut house. And my mother-in-law is not super mobile, and she's less so. She's still alive. She's less so now, but she... And she was in some kind of pain, I remember. She was achy. And she's also a little anxious. Mm-hmm. And so I had her sit in a chair and just raise her arms over her head and then lower her arms down, sitting in a chair. And then inhaling as she raised her arms, her arms and then exhaling as she lowered her arms. And after she did that a few times, she was calmer because it's sort of a focused activity. And I said, you just did yoga. And <laughs> she wow. was kind of, she was sort of amazed, you know. So, That's so it can cool. be done in any time. Um, my oldest yogi in the book is now 92. She was yeah. 91 when we took the photo, and she's still doing yoga. She's amazing, beautiful, so, very so, unusual, unicorn, you know, woman. She, but <laughs> anyone can do yoga. You don't have to have been doing it forever. Some of those people that I've seen, and I don't know everybody's name, but some of them who are still teaching into their 90s, it is it just blows me away. And some have been practicing for a long time, and I especially love the stories of people who picked it up maybe in their 60s or 70s, and mm-hmm. it is just something to behold. It just blows me away. I think yoga is a little like aging. You know, I almost think the older you get, the better suited you are for it. At least that's mm. my hope because – that's the only direction we're aging, right? <laughs> it's older. <laughs> As Dr. I, Laura says, between now and dead. And you've got, <laughs> I love when she does that. And you've got Sunny here. You've got downward facing dog pose. This has to be oh, one of my Sunny. favorites. Whose dog is this? Is it yours? No. No. So Sunny is a dog. And we, I, I don't know what, I, because yoga also is sort of funny. I have to, like, it can be super earnest, but. Sometimes you're in yoga class and something really funny happens and you just sort of, like, I kind of laugh or, like, you know, it can be messy and sweaty and ridiculous. 
and I wanted a funny moment in the book. And I thought I just, what I, actually what I wanted was I wanted a dog doing downward facing dog and I wanted a baby doing happy baby. I we did love not, that. The, the baby is, we do have a baby in there. He is not doing happy baby. No, he's not. Where I mean, you lie on your yeah. back and hold your feet like babies right. do when they're happy. But I did achieve the downward facing dog. <laughs> and, the, and the way we did, I, I was just telling, so I was telling my photographer and our wardrobe stylist, who is one of our crew members and the sister of my photographer, and I was saying how all I want is just, I just want to find a dog who will do downward facing dog. And still, the wardrobe stylist says, I will train our dog to do it. Oh, she trained so, the dog. Okay. Well, she hired someone to train the dog. To do the dog it. was trained. Okay. The dog, yes. Now, the dog does, I mean, that is supposed dogs do, but we wanted yeah. to make sure that the dog could do it in a windowsill, on command. You know, it wasn't like just the dog, you know, dogs do it on a whim when they wake up, right? They stretch and that stretching exactly. with, their, with their bottoms in the air. And yeah. I just needed, because we were on such a tight schedule, I was like, you know, like, make it snappy. You know, like, I need a dog <laughs> who will do it when I say. So I actually paid... To, I was so into this photo, I paid a lot of money to get that dog trained so that she would do downward dog. On <laughs> well, she did. Your money was well spent, Lauren, because it's a really. Thank you. It is beautiful. I would take a box of note cards with that dog. So cute. She's like a mop. Right, like a golden mop. Adorable, and in that window. Yeah. And I was thinking when you were saying the picture with Margarita um, in the Sphinx pose with the baby. Not, uh, Her baby, have, right. Right, you do have somebody in here doing happy baby. But, I have a grown-up. <laughs> yes, a grown-up baby. There are, I mean, there are, at each picture and each story, I, I love reading stories about why people choose to do certain things, where their paths are taking them, or also what's happened in, in life that sort of mm-hmm. brings you to this place. And so now these were interviews. Did, did they write the stories, or you wrote them in first person for them, or how did, they, how did that work? I wrote them for them. Um, I interviewed them, each one of them, pretty extensively. Generally, I actually, it's interesting when you said capturing their story in the photo. I actually interviewed each one after we photographed them because I wanted to get to see them move a little bit before. I mean, some of them I knew, but the ones I didn't know, I wanted to see them in action before I formulated my questions for them. So I can't remember what your question was. How did I do it? I wrote the story. I interviewed them. And I, you know, these people told me many, many stories. And then I, I, I wanted sort of a, a um, collection of, because everybody can talk about yoga and how it made them more calm. Like everybody mm-hmm. has that story, but of course the whole book couldn't be that story. And so I kind of, you know, I, I, I thought some, you know, my, uh, this friend of mine named Natalie who <laughs> talks about how every time she's in yoga, she just looks at her pedicure and starts getting all anxious because her, <laughs> she feels like her pedicure is sort of not that great and people are staring at her and, and like, <laughs> I have that thought in yoga all the time, and I and when she started telling me the story, I thought, okay, this is this is her story. This is what she's going to talk about. Funny. But there's a lot of other stuff. You know, there are many stories about anxiety, many stories about eating disorders, or some trauma. I mean, there's a lot of stuff, and then there's pedicure stories. You know, well, the pedicure definitely is is a highlight, and I think that because when your mind is starting to wander you know, you sort of bring it back, but there are so You try, times, right? <laughs> right. And if you're staring at your toes, I can see where that, that could happen. And I love the way the stories are organized. I'm glad that I, I thought of asking that one because I didn't know if people wrote their own stories and you edited them, but I can, this, so this took many, many hours to really yeah. watch people move, have the photography going on and then hearing people's stories and making just like a whole package that works so well together. It is real. And, and I'm looking at Taryn here and the oh, way she's, she's beautiful. Posed. Beautiful. Yeah. And also just the way the composition of her pose with the metal in the window, in the bars in the window. I just love the way, you know, there's just, there's so much to look at in the photography, in the stories, Anything from, like you say, uh, people going through transitional times to, in fact, transitioning and trauma and death. Some, <laughs> you know, I mean, there's all sorts of stuff in there. There's so much and so many poses. And um, was there anybody that you really wanted to get in the book that, you know, you just didn't have any more room or I'll yeah. do next time? Yeah. Impossible. Yeah, no, there were a, f- a lot of people that I wanted that sometimes that either they – you know, like our schedules just didn't work or we couldn't make it happen. There's a girl in, um, in, in San Diego who she's, 
she may not be now the youngest yoga teacher who's certified in the country, but she was at the time that I knew of. She was about 12 or 13. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah. She's like, a, she's a young girl and she teaches yoga and she has a certification. And um, I was just dying to photograph her, you know, and we, so we went to LA for some of the photos and I was sort of negotiating with her dad, like, could she come up? And she was going somewhere for a school break or something crazy. She just couldn't do it. Um, and then there's a woman who, one of the most famous um, examples of yogi unicorns is a woman named Cal Porchon Lynch. And you've probably seen pictures of her. She's about 98. She's, she's the one a, I was talking about when I yeah, was saying I could she, remember her name. Oh, I cannot yeah. get enough of her. She, people, so I've interviewed her before for other things. And I wanted to photograph her for this. And she could, you know, she's, she's very busy. She's like a busy lady. She's like 98. She still teaches yoga. She goes to I all know. these events. It's amazing. And I, yeah. And she, she, okay. So she's this beautiful, she has a great body. I mean, she's just a really good looking woman uh, for any age. <laughs> like, I know. And she, um, and you just can't help but be sort of awed at her. And her publicist said that when she goes places, people come up to her and just want to touch her. Like she's like a she's like an idol, like a like a longevity symbol or something. And I wanted to talk to her about that, but she couldn't do it. So maybe for Yoga Bodies too, if there is one, I'll get to well, talk to Tal. I know. I, yes, I mean, can you write? She's ninety eight and she's busy, busy. And I I think that that is that is a unicorn certainly. But the thing is, there are many ways to sort of achieve part of you know, if not the full unicorn, then at least. A piece of it, and so we're all unicorns, right? <laughs> well, of course, we are, right. Yeah. When you really get down to it, we all are. And I'm on the yeah. phone with Lauren Lipton, Yoga Bodies, Real People, Real Stories, and the Power of Transformation. I could go really through each and every one of these books, the stories and what they evoke. Um, it's just very powerful. Uh, Michelle, you have here extended. Isn't she great? So, pose, yes, an, an amazing story. And I was reading about her. You know, she just she came from a very dark place of loss, and to see the transformation, really, I think that's what it is—the transformative power. And you've got little Shane here, little baby. <laughs> God, it's just um, there really is something for everyone here, and I'm very excited to share this with Reading with Robin listeners and go to That's Yoga okay. Bodies Book, yogabodiesbook.com for more information, and you can find Lauren on Facebook and on Twitter and hopefully coming to a town near you. This is just one of these books to be shared, celebrated, you know, picked up for inspiration or for just there just are so many things you're going to pick this book up and say, oh, this is just the photo I needed to see today. It's that kind of connection. You know, it's um, it's just gorgeous, and I'm very excited to share it with everybody. And before I let you go, because it wouldn't be a show without it, what are you reading? <laughs> what do you recommend? What's a favorite book that's on your nightstand or one that you are dying to get to? Okay, so um, I am doing a yoga teacher training right now. So, which means I'm, I'm practicing to, I don't know why I'm doing it in some ways, because I don't know that I want to be a yoga teacher, but I'm doing it. It's 200 hours and it's like a crazy graduate school level course in like, like groovy chakras and stuff. So <laughs> my, I have on my nightstand right now, the weirdest collection of books, including the law of attraction by oh, huh? Esther and Jerry Hicks, which is a very odd book. Sure. And the Chakra Workbook by Pauline Wills. And um, there's one called A Path with Heart by Jack Cornfield, uh-huh. um, which is called a, a Path with Heart. It's a spiritual, a guide through the perils and promises of spiritual life. Um, and so that's all my homework. And then the book I'm actually reading right now is Lincoln in the Bardo by, um, by George Saunders, which is somewhat weirdly yogic, too, in its own way. Well, those are the things that you wind up connecting to, right? I mean, I, yeah. I always feel like when there's something I'm really into, so many things will come at me that makes where you're like, wait, why now? Why this? But then it's sort Serendipity, of Serendipity, right? Yeah, yeah. Ab- absolutely. When you're open to things and you sort of pay attention to rhythm and meaning and all of that. But um, thank you. I always love to know what people are reading and, you know, be I'm glad showing. I'm reading something cool. Like, what if I hadn't been reading something cool? I would. Don't, I'm, I really am reading something cool, though. So that's good. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's I'm thankful <laughs> that you were able to share cool with reading with Robin audience, and also for sharing Yoga Bodies. It's yogabodiesbook.com, and you can find Lauren 
on Facebook and, and online and everything. And I want to thank you so much for your time and as a, a pleasure to connect, and I look forward to more. Thank you, Robin, so much.